welcome to this video. I wanted to do a series on um, deploying to EKS uh, to show how we can deploy a Django backend and then a view front end uh, to EKS. So I created a small app which is basically still under development to you know to show how we can uh, do that. Uh, so quickly I have this uh, you know empty empty app which is uh, going to which is still under development and then I have um, an admin backend yeah so uh, what we see is that um, these are all under the same domain name but uh, they have subdomain so the subdomain for the front end is this and then the subdomain for the back end is this and what we see is that um, this is using HTTPS, um, you know, both the front end and back end are using HTTPS. Yeah. All right. So this is, we'll want to take this and deploy it. So, uh, but I figured that putting this into one video uh, may it make it very long. So I wanted to break it down and do, uh, you know, separate videos at each stage. But this specific video is you know, focused on uh, uh, just going through all these in form of an overview, uh, just to see um, uh, what our setup looks like for this that we deployed. And then the coming videos will be focusing on going into the details and seeing how to do it. Uh, so this video will not be seeing how to do, but will be seeing uh, what it looks like. Uh, so we have an AWS account. So we'll be showing how to create an AWS account and also how to create an IAM user um, uh, and, uh, you know, who has permissions to access resources, uh, you know, on AWS. Um, so we'll also be going through um, how to create an EKS cluster. So I just want to show uh, you uh, what our EKS cluster looks like so that uh, you'll have an idea of what we'll be creating. So I have one cluster here and um, if I go inside um, under resources, I can see um, I have, um, you know, uh, we deployed our things under this namespace. So we created uh, another namespace. We didn't want to use the default and then um, uh, these other namespaces for you know the certificates and stuff so um, this is what um, uh, we have on the pods uh, these are for the you know Django back end and these are for the view front end so we have two pods uh, on each um, so as you can see uh, even for the replica sets everything is within our namespace yeah here yeah, yeah so um, we have this replica set for the Django backend uh, that has two pods, and then this one here for the front end that has that has two pods. And uh, then uh, for the deployments, uh, you can see we have this for the front for the back end, and then we have this uh, for the front end. Yeah. And then um, uh, what else can we see here? Uh, nodes. We have we have two nodes. Uh, so we have a node group that has uh, two nodes. Yeah, we'll also be seeing how to how to create that. Um, then, uh, of course, these are the namespaces. Like I'd said, uh, these are this is the one we created. Then also this, but um, uh, mainly this uh, is where our cluster uh, is. So, um, all right. So the services. Uh, so we have one service for the back end and then one service for the uh, for the front end. Uh, then the ingresses uh, we have uh, one for the back end and then one for the front end. All right. So um, uh, what else? So basically that's it. Uh, we have one node group here that has two nodes, uh, like we had seen. Um, so we'll be seeing how to create an EKS cluster 
uh, using uh, AWS defaults, and then we'll see how we can create an EKS cluster uh, defining you know our own configuration on some areas, uh, as opposed to just uh, you know spinning up the defaults. Uh, so we'll see. This is what we'll cover under uh, EKS cluster. Uh, then um, under RDS, so I will just quickly go to RDS. Uh, so we have an RDS instance uh, using Postgres. So if I go under databases, so uh, we can see that we have one instance using Postgres. And uh, if I try to open this, um, uh, this is what it looks like. Um, uh, yeah. So our, in the upcoming videos, we'll create a separate video for this showing how to uh, create RDS instance. Uh, so it has two approaches. There is uh, easy create. This kind of allows you to easily create an RDS instance uh, using uh, the defaults. Then standard create, uh, you, you kind of have to know more about what you're doing and uh, uh, define your own uh, configuration. Uh, for example, the VPC, uh, or the security groups and stuff. So you have to um, you have to define uh, uh, your own configuration. So we'll see both approaches. Uh, then next, um, let me take you to ECR to see what uh, our ECR looks like. So basically, ECR is our container registry. Uh, you know, um, this is the Elastic Container Registry. So this is where we will be pushing our images. Um, so we can see we have the repository for back end and then for front end. So this is where we push the back end images and then the front end images on this one. So if I open this repository, you can see that, uh, for example, the latest one we are using is this. Yeah, so, and then if I go to the front end one, um yeah it also looks like that so what we'll be covering is creating images and pushing them to the elastic container registry um uh, some people can use other registries like docker registry uh, but in this one we want to use this one since it is already part of aws yeah all right so um the next are uh, will be um, seeing how to use ingress uh, we'll uh, create uh, an AWS load balancer controller, and then we'll create an ingress. We'll have to ingress uh, resources uh, for the back end and for the front end. So uh, for us to see um, a load balancer, we, you know, so I'll go under load balancers. Yeah, this is uh, basically it. So we'll be, you know, talking uh, more about this, uh, how to create, how to create the listeners and stuff. Yeah, so uh, basically that's it. So that's what we'll cover uh, under Ingress. And then of course, uh, how to create the Ingress resources, yeah. And everything in between uh, to make it work, yeah. So, um, yeah. Then our, uh, once we, you know, fully deploy, uh, you know, uh, with this, once we have our services running, uh, you realize that everything is using HTTP. So the next thing we'll want to use HTTPS, and uh, to do that, we have to uh, have to set up a certificate. Uh, so um, we'll use the certificate manager to um, to create uh, a certificate. So we have one certificate here that we created that we are using for our domain name. Uh, as you can see, we have star.fedspa.com and that's why, uh, you know, our subdomains like HR app and uh, backend uh, subdomain are all using HTTPS. Yeah, but we'll look at that in, in more detail. And then we can also create a certificate that serves a specific, as you know, subdomains, as opposed to like, uh, you know, using um, a star. Um, so our, we'll look at how to do this and uh, see it in more detail. Um, 
Uh, our domain name is registered with GoDaddy, so we'll see how to set up the subdomains uh, with 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 GoDaddy, and also to how to link uh, our subdomains with uh, with uh, uh, with the AWS uh, uh, load balancer. Yeah, so we'll see how to set up uh, um, the GoDaddy side of things to to make sure that uh, it works and it is picked up by the load balancer yeah so um the next thing is um we'll look at uh, basically the basics of aws networking so if i go uh to vpc i uh, will be covering uh, just uh, a few things um uh, once we try to create an eks cluster there are certain default it spins up uh, like uh, you have a default a default uh, vpc uh, subnets route all these you, you get defaults but we will go into detail to see how can we create our own vpc how can we create our own subnets um, uh, route table security groups and all that so our deployment uses our own um, uh, the configurations that we created so like the vpc um uh, if i'm to pick up the vpc that uh, this is using so we created this vpc and uh, uh we'll you know have a specific video to show how to create a vpc yeah and then also subnets uh we have a number of subnets but uh, our vpc uh, basically has two subnets so we'll see also how to create uh, subnets um, yeah and how to uh, link it to to route tables so we'll also be showing how to create route tables and also to understand uh, what are route tables um, uh, yeah so we have our route tables here um, oh sorry uh, if i choose uh, this vpc yeah so um that's what we have there uh so then uh we will also go ahead and see how to create uh, security groups and we'll also get an understanding of uh, what security groups are um uh, but if i basically go here and i go under security groups you see that uh, we have uh, a number of them yeah uh, then we'll go ahead to create to see uh, what is a NAT gateway and then what is internet gateway and how we can use them as well yeah so uh, all right so we have our gateway here yeah uh, then um, we'll also do a video uh, showing how we can use cloud watch uh, for our logs um uh, because we want to be able to you know to easily have logs uh, from different parts of um, our deployments uh, so we'll uh, see how to use cloudwatch for that then um we'll see um how to deploy our view front end to eks uh, using nginx yeah so uh, that's what our deployment is using uh, so we'll see how to do that and then finally we'll see how to you know set up ci cd uh, such that uh, once we every time we develop and we have new changes that we would like to deploy we don't have to like delete the deployments then deploy afresh we want to use um, uh, we don't want to do it manually so we want to use ci cd pipelines uh, for that and then we'll see uh, how that works we already have that set up so we have a pipeline here and then uh, uh, but we'll see more you know on how to you know create it and uh, how to do automatic deploys yeah all right so uh, I think that's that's uh, that's basically it that's what we'll be uh, going through uh, let me know uh, if um, there is something else you'd like us to cover in this process uh, but this is what i've thought 
about so far um and um yeah let's let's um let's all uh, join hands and uh, uh see how this goes uh thank you so much and um i thank you for watching uh please subscribe as well thank you